Hey guys, Steven Lightspeed here, and today we are going to be taking a look at a very cool product um, that uh, I've been working on for the last couple weeks. The product is called the Prusa Box, and it is manufactured by a company called Printer Box uh, out of France. And uh, the owner, uh, Marcel, reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in taking a look at uh, the Prusa Box for my Prusa, and uh, of course I gladly said yes. Um, it is important to know that they sent this to me uh, at, for, for free, no, no money changed hands, uh, all opinions are my own. So uh, today I've done a lot of, I've taken a lot of consideration to make sure that uh, this video is as thorough and as organized as possible. So hopefully uh, I cover all the features and if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments below. So. Uh, number one, what is a Prusa box? Well, the Prusa box is a enclosure manufactured uh, out of stainless steel, mostly one millimeter thick, uh, very sturdy stainless steel. Uh, it is cut, bent, uh, and packaged in France and then shipped worldwide. Um, kind of the best iteration or the best version of 3D printing is that uh, most of the manufacturing gets done on site. So you get the kit, you print the parts, uh, and then you assemble it in your home, cutting down on shipping, packaging, etc. So this kit is comes as a base kit uh, in a flat pack. Um, it basically comes with the top, the bottom, you know, the, the frame itself, the acrylic panels, um, and all the hardware to assemble the basic box. How you configure it is totally up to you. Now, today we're gonna to be specifically talking about how I chose to configure my box, um, and you may decide to do something totally different. So, um, first of all, I'm going to go down the features list, if you will. Um, we're gonna go and, and I'm gonna one by one talk about what I believe are the most important features, um, and then uh, we will move on to the next section. So, first and foremost, features. So uh, I mentioned b before it is bent uh, and cut. It's a laser cut uh, stainless steel construction. Um, all the uh, all the bins are very professional looking. All the cuts are very exacting, very, very nice. Um, it comes all prepackaged in the kit and uh, has a, you know, basically just a film over to protect the stainless steel. Um, but it is a very robust and a very sturdy construction that relies on the stainless steel and not just the printed parts. So what I mean by that is, is, you know, most of the load bearing parts of this box are stainless steel. The printer parts are just kind of to tie everything together. So it's not really, you know, I mean, it's important, but it's not, uh, you know, load bearing, I guess, uh, I guess I'll go with that load bearing. It's not load bearing. Um, the box itself is, like I said, is very, very sturdy and it's very thick and very strong. So number two, um, probably one of the coolest features on this box is, is that it does have an integrated HEPA filtration system. Um, it mounts in the upper or in the back left uh, hand corner at the top. Um, it has a 120 millimeter uh, high strength fan. Um, it is a Sunon fan, um, so it's very quiet. Um, it has a charcoal uh, filter and a HEPA filter, and both of them stack in there like a sandwich around the fan. Um, and so, yeah, so the one of the second biggest features of this is its ability to basically filter all the fumes and, you know, ickiness that comes off of printing uh, certain materials and uh, cleans it up and then filters clean air to the to your room or wherever wherever you have your printer stored. The second or the third thing is active cooling. So active cooling uh, uses a uh, a relay, a temperature controlled relay, um, and a potentiometer that um, is a motor controller. Together, those two uh, components mount together cleanly in the side or the front of the Prusa box and uh, control the HEPA fan. So. You can either decide to have the HEPA fan blowing like crazy and you know on all the time. Um, you can dial the speed you know slower or faster, um, but you can also set a temperature um, that you want it to hit. A cooled, uh, not the not the 
heated temperature, but the cooled temperature. So basically the, the box is going to get whatever it's going to get inside of there. And you, if you set it at, like say, look, I don't want it to go over 40 degrees Celsius. Um, essentially, it will run that fan at varying speeds um, and on or off uh, to attempt to hit that, that temperature. So far, um, right now, for example, I have it set at 41 degrees and it has been holding a stable 41 degrees inside the box. Um, so in my opinion, it does a very, very good job of this. Um, of course, some of it is left to interpretation, like where you mount the, um, the actual thermometer. You can, you can kind of mount it in a few different places. Um, I mounted mine as on the top and center, um, but you can mount it anywhere you want. Obviously, I was attempting to get the most accurate ambient temperature in the box. Um, number four, uh, the Prusa box has doors on all sides, front, back, side to side, and on the top, and they are made of acrylic. Um, they all have a clever little uh, locking mechanism that makes them very quick to open and close. Um, and probably the most important part is, is uh, the hinges are designed in such a way that the doors can open and the doors won't come off. Now, if you open them all the way open, they will slide off. Um, they have little stoppers that make them where the doors come off very easily if they're opened all the way. And, uh, you know, in the case of you working on the printer, uh, loading filament in the printer, um, or you're printing PLA or something that doesn't require uh, an enclosure, um, you can simply just take the doors off. Um, slide them behind the enclosure and uh, they're nice and tidy and out of the way. Number six, um, I talked about the stainless steel construction. I'm going to mention it one more time because there's another feature of it being a stainless steel box that I think is important is uh, they sell, uh, or they don't sell, excuse me, they give you the files to basically adapt this box to be stackable, um, kind of like Legos. So if you have four Prusas in a farm, um, you know, this would be an ideal solution, in my opinion. Um, you could take four Prusas or three Prusas and you could effectively stack them one on top of each other and they make the feet and the receptacles on the top. Um, it's basically like a little roof rack, like a roof rack on a car and the, the top box snaps and slides right down into the little feet. Uh, number seven is uh, they made a pretty clever uh, camera rail system in here. Um, it, it's in the front right hand corner of the box and it allows you to mount a Wise Cam, a Raspberry Pi Cam, um, uh, a C720 Cam, you know, Logitech type cameras. Basically, anything that you could mount into or that you could use with an Octopi uh, instance, you could mount in this box. Number eight, um, a scrap filament tray. It sounds insignificant, but uh, in utilizing all the space inside the enclosure, they have made little you know, add-ons. It's a little uh, tray that catches all little snippets um, that you can just scoop into there and empty once in a while. I personally love it because, um, you know, you can't have trash cans everywhere, but um, it's nice to have a little tray that you can just empty out once in a while. Number nine is uh, integrated uh, touchscreen. So the base configuration calls for a three and a half inch, um, it's called a Kuman or K-U-M-A-N uh, TFT touchscreen. Um, which is originally what I purchased. Um, however, mine did not work. Um, so after some thought on it, uh, after I thought about it overnight, I basically decided to go for the seven inch official Raspberry Pi uh, touchscreen. And uh, if you can swing it, that's the way to go. Number 10 is a Raspberry Pi integration. Obviously that the Raspberry Pi is uh, cooled with a fan and sits right behind uh, the front of the uh, enclosure on the inside. Um, Again, it has you know full-time cooling on it to keep the Raspberry Pi nice and nice and cool. Um, and I went with Raspberry Pi four. You could use Raspberry Pi three and you know in all its variations, um, but it does have full Raspberry Pi integration. And predominantly, when you have the TFT screens, whichever you decide, uh, it runs Octodash. Um, this is my first time using Octodash, and it was a breeze to set up, and it was you know it works very very good. For number eleven is full LED integration. So there is uh, the ability to mount LEDs all the way around the top of the enclosure. Um, you can see in the videos that my enclosure is very, very bright. Um, and uh, in my case, I elected to mount mine or wire mine directly to the PSU, which is how I had it in my lock enclosure. And I really like that. It turns on and off with the, with the printer. Um, 
but in their setup and their instructions, they generally uh, suggest that you, you know, you connect them to a 12 volt uh, buck converter, and then you have a little switch at the back that you can shut the lights on and off. In my case, I leave the lights on all the time; it doesn't bother me. So, um, and you know, when the printer's running, I want the lights on anyways. So, number 12 is uh, they have, you know, in this very compact enclosure, they have found a way to enclose a full spool holder and feed system also in the front of the box uh, you can see in some of the videos or in, you can see in my video that uh, that there is a, uh, a full spool of um, filament in there um, I mentioned the temperature a few times um, like I said it's doing 41 42 degrees no problem I haven't tested to see how hot it can hold inside the enclosure um, but for me, you know, 100 to 115 degrees is plenty hot inside the box. It is extremely hot inside the box. Um, it does a really good job of keeping the heat inside the box and um, also eliminating all the drafts, etc., that are needed for printing things like polycarbonate. The thing that kills your electronics is heat. And uh, anytime you have an enclosure and I see people with their PSUs inside the enclosure, uh, it makes me scratch my head a little bit because it's like it, you're basically limiting the life of your electronics. Um, while the heat is good for the printing process, the heat is horrible for your electronics. Stepper motors, um, you know, sensors, um, wiring, bearings, um, you know, but certainly your PSU, your control boards, all that stuff that's generating its own heat anyways, you stick it in a box that gives it no room to breathe is kind of a recipe for disaster. The Prusa box has a PSU relocation that basically moves it to the back of the box. It has um, uh, a cooling underneath of it so that it has the ability to pull cold air from the, from the bottom um, up into the PSU. It also, because the HEPA fan, keep in mind the HEPA fan is basically the, the, the air filtration fan is pulling a steady uh, pressure inside the box. While the HEPA fan is on, you're basically pull, pulling a vacuum on the box and the air is gonna come from the path of least resistance. So it's gonna pull up and through the PSU. It's gonna pull up and through the INT board, effectively keeping those sensitive pieces of electronics uh, cool or cooler than they would be otherwise. So um, they put a lot of thought into where the inlets for the box where it would reside. Um, and they're right under the PSU and they're right under the control board, basically pulling nice fresh cold air uh, in through the electronics. Quiet. It's quiet. Um, it does a really good job at isolating all the printer noises, which you can probably hear in my room, but we are six inches from a lulz bot. We're a foot from a uh, rail core. We're probably three feet from a, a, a huge delta all printing right now. The one printer you cannot hear in my room is the Prusa and the Prusa box. Wire management. So they've also taken a lot of care um, to basically give you places to hide and run all the wiring. So there is a wiring loom that runs down the, if you're looking forward at the box, down the left side of, or the uh, Y axis path on the le far left side of the box. There's a very clever little uh, tunnel that they made uh, that you print and all your wiring basically snaps inside of that. And then the vertical um, wiring all snaps into uh, the corner all the way up. Um, essentially hiding about 90, 97.3% of the wiring. Why not? So is that all the features? The answer is no. There are plenty more things that you could do to your Prusa box. Now, in my case, I went with the things that matter to me. I wanted active cooling. I wanted to have the filter. I wanted the LED lights. I wanted Raspberry Pi integration. I wanted the uh, Prusa screen controller thing on the front integrated. Um, I wanted the quiet feet. Um, I wanted the spool holder inside. The things that matter to me, I put on my box, which at the end of the day is exactly what this is. It's a base kit right that that's what you're buying you're buying the base kit the metal parts the hardware and the acrylic everything else is kind of up to you and there is a community around this project if you go on prusaprinters.org uh, i will link to um 
their their file sets they have on there on the Prusa printers website. They do have a lot of people making modifications for this printer, um, a lot of changes. A lot, there's a guy that uh, named Colin Hill that's made, made, making videos on this also, um, and he's made a whole, whole front um, fascia for the for the Prusa box that is fully modular. You can take things out, put things in, um, and kind of configure it any way you want. And so that's the beautiful thing about this is it is a very solid, sturdy platform that you can modify any way you see fit. Build experience. So I wanna take a second just to talk about my build experience. Uh, this design is super clever. I was so blown away when I printed the parts and the way they had them orientated. Um, when I first looked at them, I thought, why do they have them orientated like that? And then you realize there's, the parts really don't have any flat sides on them. Um, they have these little bump, these one millimeter kickouts uh, on on the corner pieces, for example. Um, and I, I just said, okay, fine, I'm going to print them the way they set them up. So I printed them the way they set them up in the in you know in the in the download package. And it's kind of interesting, but um, I didn't realize this. But when you put this together, there's a very special way you have to click the corner pieces into the printed parts. Um, I did end up finding a video on Colin Hill's channel on YouTube um, that basically showed you how to click the the corner pieces into the printed parts, but it is super, super clever. You know, the way this guy designed this kit um, is very clever. Um, basically, everything just kind of snaps together, and then you use the hardware to basically screw, you know, to kind of fasten everything together permanently. Um, I thought it was, I was really impressed by the CAD work in this uh you know enclosure and i think you will be too um make sure your printer settings are dialed in i will say that um and make sure that you um watch it, you know colin hill's videos on youtube he does a really good job of showing you how to snap the pieces in it wasn't abundantly clear to me how that how it worked um but once i understood it it's like nothing i've ever seen before so um probably the one thing that caught me caught up uh, was the figure out how to snap the pieces together. Um, overall, the build experience was very good. It was very easy to understand. I mean, um, but I will say this, the downside of this whole kit, the, probably the most negative thing I have to say, they don't have a real good build guide. They have a section by section, you know, here's the PSU section, here's the door section, here's the, you know, et cetera, the frame uh, section. Um, but it's not a step by step like you're used to with Prusa or the Vorons or, or whatever the case may be. So you have to kind of use some common sense. In my case, it took about 10 hours, I think, to build it from start to finish. Now, I did a lot of that on the streams, which you can watch uh, if you if, uh, link to them below. Um, I did do a lot of stuff on the streams, but the streams were kind of more bullshitting with other people and not building the printer or I was attempting to build the, or the box the enclosure so I would not use my streams as a guide but they might be beneficial to you um, I did do some things on stream uh, that might be of use to you and I did explain like the way the corners snap together um, I'll, you know in the first stream I think so um, they might be of use to you um, I know watching stream sucks but they're there if you want to try to use them it's up to you let's talk about the pros and the cons, right? Uh, just to summarize, right? HEPA filtration system, strong as an ox, right? Built very, very well. Holds heat in extremely well, uh, surprisingly well. Has active cooling. Uh, set a temperature. It will hold that temperature for the most part, unless it's too crazy. Um, it eliminates all the drafts uh, across your printer bed, which is important. It protects the printer's electronics and power supply from overheating or from overheating. It makes your printer much quieter. It makes your printer much safer. Um, it does take all the fumes out of the printer and, you know, holds them through a filter and exhausts uh, clean air into the environment. Can you put a price on that? I don't know. I, to me, I print a lot of polycarbonate, a lot of carbon fiber polycarbonate. I know it's toxic and I know that the fumes that come off that filament are not good. So, you know, the fact that this has a, a HEPA charcoal, you know, double 
fan system in it uh, is fantastic. The last thing, obviously, is I think it's a very compact, it's very smart and compact, very well designed, no doubt about it. There's no issues, nothing I would say, I wonder if he could have done this differently. It's perfect. It, they did a really nice job in the designing of it. But there are a couple things, like I said, that are downsides. The instructions are mediocre. Um, on a section by section, they're great. As a comprehensive, uh, you start here and end here, not so good. So that's something they need to work on. I think that is something that they are working on. Um, yeah, probably what you're all wondering. Anyways, let's talk about the cost of this unit. So again, this was sent to me at no charge. Um, I haven't sent them any money. They haven't sent me any money. Um, they're welcome to send me money. If they want to send me money. Um, and all, all my, you know, all my uh, opinions of this are all my own. I'm not favoring it. Um, I'm just giving you exactly how I feel. Uh, and I'm trying to give it to you from the perspective of if I would have paid full price, how I would feel. So um, let's get into the cost breakdown and then we can kind of go from there. So here on the screen, you can see basically my rough cost breakdown. If I were to buy this kit, it would have been $328 delivered to my door in Phoenix, Arizona from France. Um, for again, stainless steel, acrylic, all the hardware, um, et cetera. Raspberry Pi 4, 75 bucks. The screen was 83. I spent $55 in filament. Um, you know, the, the, the display cable, the DC um, speed potentiometer, the temp control, the rocker switches, the temp display, um, all that comes down to the bottom. And I even, the stuff I had on hand, I costed it out to, was $597. Again, like I said, you could build this base kit and probably slash that price in half. Um, you know, one of the beautiful things about this kit is you could build your own, very basic, and you could upgrade it over time and add these options as you go. You don't have to do it all at once. You could always go back and add a, uh, the touch screen. You could always go back and add the HEPA filter. Um, you might be able to find a cheaper way to add a HEPA filter. I don't know. But the modular aspect of this allows for you to build this as you go. Um, but all together, $597, that's a chunk of change. It's not cheap. I hear you. But again, think of all the things that I just said. It's safe. It keeps the heat in. It reduces or maybe stops drafts. It keeps your electronics safe and cool. Um, it has great lighting. It's modular. You can change it, add it, delete it, and build it any way you want. To me, I think $597 is a fair price. So that's cost breakdown. I think I've covered everything uh, as thoroughly as I can. Um, again, some things are gonna be open for interpretation. Some things are you know, unique to my situation and maybe not yours. Um, but with all that said, I do wanna thank you for watching. I do wanna thank you for interacting and I do wanna thank you for all your uh, support. I think this is gonna be long enough. Um, I hope you found this video interesting, you know, fun, insightful. Uh, I really try my best to make this as organized as possible and as thorough as possible to really do printer box uh, justice and to not pay them back, but to respect the fact that they sent me this product to spend some time with. And this video is kind of a, kind of a summary of my thoughts on the box, the process, um, and how I think it works. And I will continue to post on Twitter. Um, my link's in the description. You can follow me there um, on how things are going with the printer box and the Prusa box, I mean. Um, I'm probably getting them mixed up a thousand times. My apologies. Don't sue me. If you liked the video, if you got something out of it, um, you know, hit the like button. If you hate my guts, and I know there's people that probably do, and that's okay. If you hate my guts, hit the down button. That's cool. All right, guys. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you uh, liked it. I hope it was informative. I hope you uh, hit the like button. Um, I hope you subscribe. I hope you follow me on Twitter. Um, all the links for my social media uh, platforms will be down below in the description box. I will list all the products that I bought, mostly from Amazon. They will all be affiliate links as much as I possibly can. So with that said, I'm out of here guys. I'll catch you on the next one.